Hi, my name is Kevin Jones and I'm a teacher in material science and engineering at the University of Florida. And my name is Sophia Acord and I teach in sociology at the University of Florida. And we're here to introduce you to a class that we call the impact of materials on society. So why do materials matter? What is a material? Materials are historically extremely important in the development of us as a civilization. And so one of the objectives of this class is to take a look at that relationship. Yeah, everything in our lives is made out of a material. So materials are something that we interact with on a daily basis. Materials shape our opportunities to interact with each other, the things that we build to make meaning within our society. And so our society really is built on stuff. And this class will look at the relationships between the stuff that you study. Right, and, and how the, the culture and the society that we put them into influences what is successful. Exactly. And in the process, we hope that this course will be a number of things. It will be educational. We will learn about different materials and their properties and how we select them to build things. But it will also be enlightening. Yeah, and hopefully fun. I think that's the whole goal of this thing is to get you to appreciate exactly how materials are in your life and, and how you can use them in the future and how you can influence how they are used in the future. Exactly. So to give you an example, um, if we look at um, the red rocks in this upper picture, what you see is basically something that looks like a bunch of rocks, mm -hmm. but actually that's an iron oxide. Mm -hmm. And if you reduce that iron oxide, you can then get iron from that. And that was something that we developed thousands of years ago. Mm -hmm. Now, what was weird about that is you could then turn around and make all sorts of stuff. You could make ships, and that was awesome application of, of iron. However, we didn't understand the properties of it fully. And so, for example, if you make iron really, really cold, then it's no longer ductile, and it actually becomes physically brittle. And that brittleness can actually cause ships to fail. So, as you can see in this picture, that's a Liberty ship that literally cracked in half because it got too cold in the North Atlantic. And that had a big impact on society. Yeah, and a big impact on the pocketbooks of the taxpayers, I think, as well. <laughs> exactly. Now, so you have to think about that. Now, what is this green rock? So the green rock here is what we call malachite. It's a gemstone that we, you know, you use a lot of times in making jewelry. It's a semi-precious stone. It's a beautiful stone. Mm. But, but it has an interesting property you're going to learn all about, and that is, is that if you heat it up in the presence of a little bit of carbon, it'll actually turn into a puddle of yellow metal that you can then turn around and beat into something like a scythe. And that was tremendous in terms of us as a civilization because now you could harvest wheat much, much better. Yeah, so you could establish cities, you could stay in a place longer, and you had to build trade routes with other places. But I think it's interesting that you use the example of a scythe. Why didn't we make jewelry out of copper? It's pretty and shiny. So how does a society determine what to use a material for? Right, what was, what was really important to that society at that time was probably eating more than coming up with another piece of jewelry. But they may have used it for jewelry, but then they turned around and maybe melted it back down again and recycled it. So you don't know. Sometimes the applications are lost uh, as we move forward. For example, here's one that's really interesting, and that's sand, right? Sand is something that's very ubiquitous in, on Earth. In fact, it's the most common mineral on the Earth's crust. And yet, we've, we didn't understand how we could actually use it until we melted it down and created ultra-high purity sand in the form of fiber optic cables. And that happened in the 70s, and that purification process involved understanding the properties of the sand and the silica that you're creating, and what was the property that you most wanted out of that material. In this case, you wanted the transparency to be really, really high. But of course, that enabled then us to do amazing things once we built fiber optic cables. Right, so society had to advance to a certain point of civilization so that it could even heat sand right. to a certain degree and discover its properties. And now those properties impact how each of us text our friends and interact on a daily exactly. basis. Exactly. Suddenly we became entangled with this, this whole new technology and it's affecting how we actually work as humans and interact with each other. Now hold on, we're going to get to that word entanglement later. Let's oh, I'm take sorry, another I'm sorry, example. I'm sorry. I don't mean to get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> so here's another one, for example. This is also sand. But in this case, I've made little fibers of the sand. And if I make the fiber so small and, and, and loose, then it actually doesn't conduct heat very well at all. And this was actually designed specifically for a very specific application in the, in the space shuttle program, because it turns out that you can make a, t a tile out of this material, a silica tile, and that tile can actually handle the heat of reentry. And that led to the space race, which had some really interesting considerations for world relations. But we'll leave those for another class. Right. <laughs> And so, and, and speaking of the space race, here is the example where you actually have rubber, and rubber was 
uh, is, can be created into O-rings. And again, we go back to that same principle that we were trying to figure out with the Liberty ships. It turns out that rubber has this property that if you make it very cold, then it becomes brittle and it's no longer ductile. Well, if you made a, uh, a, an O-ring for your space shuttle rocket system that was supposed to keep the hydrogen and oxygen from mixing and that O-ring cracks, that's what happened in the Challenger because it was a very cold morning. And of course that had devastating effects on us as a civilization with the loss of the Challenger. So speaking of polymers, I mean, here's another one that we all know about, right? And that's the ubiquitous plastic bottle. It's made out of polyethylene. And so uh, this has obviously been an enormous advent, but you have to decide whether it's been really a positive or a negative, right? This is the most expensive I mean, it's more expensive than gasoline yeah, to buy, buy bottled bottle water. water. It's crazy, right? And then you think about what is the impact of that has had on society. I mean, you can see right there in that picture that there's an entire polymer ocean uh, island floating around in the Atlantic and the Pacific. And people are actually trying to figure out how to harvest that to turn it into roads in the future and stuff like that. So, so we have to worry about not only how we use that material, but then how we dispose of that material as we go forward. So you can't think about the world you live in, the materials that make that world, without connecting lessons from a whole variety of different disciplines. And that's what we'll do together in this course. But in doing so, we'll tackle four key questions. The first question is, what are the scientific properties of materials on Earth? The second question, how do these materials that we discover and select and manipulate and refine on Earth, how do they impact our daily lives as individuals and also right. our societies right. on right. this larger scale? Uh, we can manipulate materials to solve problems and address social needs, but in the process, sometimes societies and their cultural norms might suggest ways that we use certain materials instead of other ways. So we'll look at how the use of materials has changed over time. The third question that this course will look at is how do these materials corrode or break down? Because when a material breaks down, that has, has sometimes very drastic effects Absolutely. on our lives. Yeah, and, and if you don't understand mm -hmm. how it's stable in its environment, then sometimes you may make the mistake of putting two materials together that you think are perfectly harmless and then having that whole system break down and that can cause all sorts of catastrophic failures. Absolutely. So you need to be really aware of that and then also, you know, you wonder what's coming in the future. What are the new materials innovations that are going to shape your life in the future? How, what is this, this thing we keep hearing about in graphene or, or other materials like that? So we're going to explore some of that and, 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 and answer the question of what's, what's coming down the pipe and, and what, what will influence your life and what decisions you're going to have to make in terms of, as, as a society, which ones you adopt and how you adopt them. Exactly. So we are very dependent on materials in our lives, but materials, as you say, are also very dependent on us to know how to manipulate them and to know how to use them in ways that improve our world.